to do is we've gone over disc, so I wanted to show you guys what drum, drums are. Again, we're not going to see a lot of them out there, but you should at least understand how they work, how they're set up, and some advantages and disadvantages. We've got the drum off of this, and these are referred to as the shoes. We don't call these the pads. For drums, they're referred to as shoes. If you go up to the parts counter and you're not specific and say shoes or pads, there's a chance sometimes they will give you the wrong component. So these are the shoes. Here's our wheel cylinders. These work just like the pistons on our front calipers. There's a piston on each side. The line comes in the middle, the hydraulic line. And when we push down in the pedal, the fluid goes in and it pushes the pistons out. That in turn pushes the shoes out against the drum. You have to picture the drum is around this. So as those shoes are expanding out, they're contacting the drum and slowing the vehicle down. Inside of this wheel cylinder, they also have cup seals like our master cylinders. That's what causes the pressure to build up and then when you let go of the brake pedal, a spring pushes the piston back and those cup seals collapse, allowing them to retract back into the middle here. It's okay to pull the corner back and see a little bit of fluid. When I say a little bit, you should just have, I, I wanna say almost damp. If it's beyond damp, then we have a leak and we need to replace the wheel cylinder. Because what will happen is this will leak fluid out, it will get with all of this brake dust and it turns it almost into like a, a gummy, almost like a brake, uh, uh, like a baking soda and it gets into the screws here on this self-adjuster. Remember I said the self-adjusting goes away? Well, that's why it goes away because these threads get caked up with that stuff and it doesn't allow the self-adjuster to turn. Well, how does the self-adjuster work? Each manufacturer thinks they have a better idea, but they all essentially do the same thing. When you go in reverse or when you apply the brakes, as the shoes move out, this little lever will move like this. And you notice it kicks it up and it catches on a tooth and it rotates that star wheel adjuster down. Well, as it rotates it down, it threads that out, which adjusts the shoe out. So as the shoes wear out, in theory, this should keep kicking that down and keep it close to the drum. But that doesn't always work. I can even tell on this one here, it's a bit tight. These are not adjusted properly. You can put the parking brake on the vehicle and it will not hold because it cannot pull the shoes out far enough to contact the drum. Is imagine the drum turning this way or turning this way. Physics says, as I start to spread this shoe out, the shoe is gonna grab the drum as it's rotating. It's gonna pull the shoe into the drum. It's gonna grab the bottom part of this shoe and pull it into the drum, essentially locking that drum. That's why these are so effective for parking brakes because of that servo action of the vehicle. This is crucial, this adjustment here. How does that parking brake work? Here's our cable down here. This cable connects to this arm and you can see I can push it. Watch what happens with the shoe up here when I pull in on it. See how it's pushing the shoes? When I pull up on that, it pushes that shoe. That shoe hits the drum, it pulls it into the drum, and that's what holds. These little springs here are hold down springs. These hold the shoes onto the backing plate. Now we've got another spring here that holds it together across the top by the self adjuster. We've got a spring down here. And notice all of these holes in these shoes. This set of shoes might work for four or five different model vehicles. But when I put them on a different vehicle, instead of putting this here, I may be flipping it and putting it up here. So it's important when you take drums apart, what I tell people who are inexperienced is take one side apart and leave the other side together. Because that way, if I can't get this side together, I have another reference over there. Or if you want to take both sides apart, go ahead, but take a picture of it first. You know, back when I started out, we didn't have these smartphone thingies. I actually had to take a piece of paper and draw it out. Take a picture, keep it that way. 
Then when you get experience, like I did at GM, I can take both sides apart because I've done 100 of them, okay? But until you get that experience, make sure you cover yourself because you could really put this together wrong, all right? So we've got the drum out, we determine, we've got the drum out, we determine that all this needs is a clean and adjust. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean it, but we're not gonna blow it off with our blow gun. We're actually gonna use this tool here, which blows cleaning material on here, and it brings it all down into here, and there's a collection of, a fiber collection bag in the bottom that collects all the dust. If you have asbestos brake pads, you have to make sure that you're getting an asbestos bag inside of here. It's a special bag. Somebody has to come pick it up like safety clean or something like that. You can't just throw it out. But we're assuming we have regular brakes here. So I'm just gonna wet this over and I'm gonna scrub it out as much as I can. Now I know this looks nasty and it looks dirty, the fluid, but it's all just dust in there. Is it using the recycled fluid? Yeah. There's a couple filters in here, and what this will do is this will filter the fluid and bring it back through, and then I'll get to use it again. This is like a cleaning solvent? Yeah. We got a can of brake clean laying around here? If not, somebody go check one of my yellow cabinets for a can of brake clean. Now, I've cleaned it up, but before I put it back on the car, I want to clean it off with brake clean. The reason for that is, number one, brake clean is the greatest fluid on the planet, but brake clean evaporates. This doesn't. This is petroleum based. So there's a little bit of silicone. It feels slippery. So after I'm done with that, I will take brake clean. See how it's drying up already? It's evaporating. The brake clean will disperse all of the stuff from here and it will evaporate, therefore making it dry. If you put this back together with this fluid still on those shoes, it tends to make the pads a little bit slippery. Or the shoes a little bit slippery. Notice how everything's dried up. Okay. One thing you can see back here, there's a hole in the backing plate. This is so that you can adjust these brakes without having to pull the drum off. Let's say the customer comes in and two weeks ago I just looked at their car. And I know that their brake shoes are good, but it just needs to be adjusted. I can actually leave the tires on the vehicle, stick a screwdriver or a spoon through that hole, and just click, 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 and turn that wheel up to adjust the brakes out. And when we put the drum back on here, I'm going to show you how to adjust it properly. You don't want to over adjust it. If you over adjust it, you'll burn the brakes up really bad. Okay? So, this is a typical common drum system. When you clean these off, too, if you notice any kind of oil or anything behind here, there's an axle seal right behind here. If you see any oil or, or built up grease right behind that flange by the axle seal, you need to address that axle seal before you proceed with the brakes. And when you're putting these together, you notice how dirty my hands are getting. You don't want to be touching the brake shoes when you're putting them all together with that stuff on your hands. Brake material is very porous in the way it's set up. It's like a sponge. So if I hold my fingers on there and they have grease in there, it will leave grease marks on there. And that will cause the brakes to glaze over. One of the tricks I always did with shoes, because there's so much material, it's so, you almost can't work on them without touching the shoes, is I would take a piece of masking tape and put it across each shoe. That way if my hands get on there and I get it dirty, I'm getting the tape dirty. And then when I get all my springs on and I'm ready to go, I just peel the tape off and the pad is undamaged, or the shoe is undamaged. The shoe is undamaged. It's uncontaminated. So even if you've got grease on the shoe, you clean it up and break it, it's still soaked in. It, if it's soaked in, you, you get nothing you can do. You can clean it off with brake clean all you want, and all you'll get is the surface stuff off, but you won't get it beyond there. And again, I have to say this because I do have students that ask this. If I spray it with the brake clean and there's still 
grease on there. Can I take sandpaper to it? No, because this has to be perfectly shaped to that drum. If you take sandpaper or my die grinder, you're putting gouges in here. You couldn't use a wire brush either. No, 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 no. Actually, if you start to use a wire brush on here, you can feel these. I mean, you can almost break them apart. You're just gonna tear it up. Let it go. Either replace them or just put them on and hope they're not too bad, okay? All right, so now what we're gonna do is we've got done with this, we're gonna go over and we're going to machine the drum.